except for the stuff on circles. Um, if you've seen that stuff before and wanted to finish it, that's great. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about circles for a little bit. That'll finish this up. We'll probably take about half the time to do that, and then we'll get started on the next section. Remember that calendar that I passed out? Yeah. Okay, that calendar that I passed out yesterday um, is tentative. I'd like to move a little bit faster than that if possible. Um, so we'll cover things as, as quickly as we can here. Um, so just keep that in mind. Go ahead. Yep. When it, so whenever whenever I finish a uh, lecture on a topic, on a section, when that's done, then you've got, um, we'll say, uh, I mean, I, it would be nice if you were done the next day so you could ask some questions about it, um, but we'll, it'll usually be due two days after that. Does that work? Okay. So we'll finish we'll finish 1.1 today. You should be done with that on Monday for sure. Okay. All right. Um, so one of the equations that we're going to take a little bit closer look at is the equation of a circle. Um, and if you've if you've done this before, that's great. But um, the definition of a circle is the set of points that are an equal distance from a given point. So equal distance from a given point. Um, so in order to do that, we've got to have the distance formula. So the distance formula is d equals a big square root, and then what was this? Yeah. yeah. Usually we do x2 minus x1, and then we square that quantity, and then y2 minus y1, and square that quantity. Okay, that's the formula. And we're actually going to use that formula, and we'll derive the um, equation of a circle. So that equal distance we call the radius, and the given point that helps us locate where the circle is, we'll call that the center. So you really only need two things to define a circle. You need to know where it is, what's the center, and you need to know what the radius is, how big the circle is. Okay? So find the equation of a circle whose center is 2 comma negative 1. So right here, 2 comma, neg oops, 2 comma negative 1. And has a radius of 5. So it's really easy to draw that. It would look something like this, but we want to come up with the equation. So this point right here was 2 comma negative 1. And this is an equation. This is a picture of all the points that will work in the equation. Well, we want to make the equation that has this as its picture. Okay? So let's take this point right here. That point is on the circle, so it should work in the equation. And the, the equation will come from the definition. So the definition is it's all of the points that are exactly the same distance from that center point right there. Well, let's find the distance between that center point and this point right here. And for that, I'm going to call this one x1, y1. And this one will be x2, y2. So the difference between the x coordinates is going to be x minus 2, quantity squared. The difference between the y coordinates is going to be y minus minus 1, so that's going to be plus 1 quantity squared. Any questions there? Okay. Wouldn't this represent the distance from a point xy to this point right here to negative 1? What did we want the distance to be? How big is the circle? What's the radius? It's 5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase that, and I'm going to put a 5 right here. This equation will give us all the points that are exactly 5 units away from that center point right there. Yeah. Okay, because in, in the formula, notice that it's x2 minus x1. So this is x2 minus x1. So this would be x minus, and x1 is a 2. And then this is going to be y2, which is a y, minus, right, the minus that's part of the formula, the distance formula, and then go grab y1. So we're going to do minus minus 1, which is going to be plus 1. Good question. Anything else? Okay, I suppose we could leave it this way, but this doesn't look very good because it's got this big ugly square root on it. So how could I get rid of the square root? You square both sides. So I get 25 equals x minus 2 quantity squared y plus 1 quantity squared. And this right here is what we would normally use for the equation of this particular circle. 
Okay, well now, like any good mathematician, what we're going to do is we're going to generalize this. Are there any questions on this idea? Because this has numbers in it. We're going to do one right now that doesn't have numbers in it, but represents the exact same idea. Everybody's got this one? Okay, well notice what changes here. Okay, we're going to come up with the equation of a circle whose radius is r and whose center is h comma k. So this is kind of a generic point. This one happened to be 2 comma negative 1. We're just going to call it h comma k. Um, if you don't know this, letters toward the beginning of the alphabet we usually use to represent constants, and letters at the end of the alphabet we usually use to represent variables. Okay? So on this problem right here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the point right here. This is going to be h comma k. I'm going to draw a circle. Just say it's about like this. And I'm going to pick this point right here, and I'm going to call that particular point x, y. And how far do we want it to be from this center point to a point on the circle? What did we say in the setup for the problem? We want it to be r. Okay. On this problem up here, the distance was 5. On this one, it's r. On this one, the center point was 2, comma negative 1. On this one, it's h, k. And notice how this is the same. Okay, we've got to represent all the points on the circle. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to just do the exact same thing. This distance is r. It should be equal to a big square root. And this is my x2, y2. This is my x1, y1. So I'll do x2, which is x, minus, what's the x coordinate of the center? h. That's the difference between the two of those. Square that. y2, which is y, minus the y coordinate of the center. So that's going to be k. And then we'll square this. Again, what we don't like about this is that big square root. I mean, it's kind of nasty either way. But if we square both sides, I get r squared equals x minus h quantity squared, y minus k quantity squared. Okay? Any questions there? Okay, so I think we're at the bottom of the third page, and at the top of the fourth page is the standard form of a circle. You'll notice that the only thing that changes is what we normally do is we normally put the r squared on the other side. The radius squared goes on this side, and then this is going to be x minus h, and this is going to be y minus k. So that's called standard form of the equation of a circle. It's a very graph-friendly form because you can look at it and you can tell what the center is. The center would be h comma k, and the radius would be the square root of this number over here. Now, the easiest one that we could have would be something like this. x squared plus y squared equals some number over here. Because if we didn't add or subtract anything from the x and didn't add or subtract anything from the y, what would the center be? Zero, zero, okay? Uh, the center's at the origin, is what we usually call that. And that's because both h and k would be zero. In order to make an x squared here, a plain old x squared, h would have to be zero. Same thing with the y squared, k would have to be zero, okay? So you have some problems on your assignment that are literally this easy. It says, find the equation of a circle in standard form if this is the center and this is the radius. So you'll notice this is the problem that we just did a minute ago, but now we're going to use this formula, this general formula for the equation of a circle. So this is h, and this is k, and this is r. And all we do is plug those things in. So this is going to be x minus, write the minus, then go find what h is. h in this case is 2, so this is going to be x minus 2 quantity squared, y minus, Write the minus, then go find out what k is. k in this case is a negative 1. So what do I write here? I write a plus 1 quantity squared. And then over here, this is r squared, so that's 25. And that's it. Much quicker to do it this way than to kind of plot those points out and think, okay, I've got to find the distance between these two, kind of uh, go at it from the definition. A lot easier to just know the formula, the standard form of the equation of a circle. Okay? Here's h and here's k. Um, and then it says, says a solution point, and this is the vocabulary that this book uses. It says a solution point of 1, negative 1. Well, if this is h and k, here's what I can do. I can write down x minus 3 
quantity squared plus y, what am I going to write? We're going to write plus 2 quantity squared. So the trick here is, everybody watching? Whatever this number is, it's the opposite for the x-coordinate of the center. Okay? So if I'm going this way, opposite of 3, negative 3 is 3. If I'm going this way, the opposite of 3 is 3 to put it into the equation. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, on this one right here, if I want to write the equation, it's going to be uh, x minus that number. So this is going to be a minus 2 rather than a positive 2. Okay, and this one right here, we're going to take the opposite of that. That's going to be a plus 1. Okay, so they're, they're always, when you put them into the equation, they're always the opposite of the number that it looked like. Okay, now I need to have the radius. What this is saying is I've got a point for the center of 3, negative 2, and then this point right here, negative 1, 1, about right there, that's a solution point. In other words, that's one of the points that's on the circle, that's one of the points that makes the equation true. What could I do with that? Or what do I need to do with that, Tammy? Yeah, I need to find the distance. I need to find the distance between these two points right here. Because if that's the distance between these two points, it's also the distance to every single other point on there. It's the radius. Okay? If we go from the center to a point on the circle, that's going to be the radius. So let's figure out what that is. So that distance would be, let's see, we'd have negative 1 minus 3 quantity squared. I'd have 1 minus minus 2 quantity squared. This is negative 4, and I square that. This is uh, 3, and I square that. Does this look familiar to anybody? This is going to be 16 plus 9, which is 25. So square root of 25, 5. So the radius is 5. So what number do I put right here? If the radius on this one is 5, what number goes here? 25. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, um, because this is negative 4 squared, that's 16. This is 3 squared, so that's 9. Add those together, we get 25. It's underneath the square root, so the square root of 25 is 5. No, because rem remember, this is what r squared is. So once you figure out the radius, this is always the square of the radius. Okay. Any questions? Okay, let's graph a couple of these. The nice thing about most of the problems that you're, you're going to encounter is um, they're already in standard form. So if this is x squared plus y squared equals 9, you only need two things. You need to know the center and you need to know the radius. What's the center on this one? At the origin, 0, 0. And whatever this number is right here, how do we find the radius from that number? Take the square root, okay? So the radius is going to be 3. So to graph this, we're just going to put, put a point at 0, 0. And then we're going to go three units left, right, up, down. So we're going to go to here, 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 and here, and then just draw the circle. Now, Graphing circles is a little more difficult to make them look nice as opposed to like drawing a line. A line's pretty darn easy. Um, if we're doing something like this, you want to make sure that people know you know what you're doing. So you'd want to convince them by, have you labeled the center and have you labeled the radius? Okay, so that information ought to be there somewhere. So if you wanted to write 0, 0 here, and then you wanted to draw a little line and write r equals 3, that would be awesome. Anybody looking at this would clearly know you know what you're doing. Okay? So let's take a look at this next one. This is a little bit different. Okay. I need to know, again, what the center is, and I need to know what the radius is. Again, to figure out the x-coordinate of the center, find the expression with the x, the perfect square with the x, and then just take the opposite of that number right there. So this is going to be 4. What's the y-coordinate going to be? Negative 2. Okay. And what's the radius? 6. So we're going to go to 4, negative 2. 
and we're going to do a radius of 6. So that's going to be 6 units in each direction. Draw the circle. It would be nice if we labeled the center, so we'll do 4, negative 2. Draw a little dotted line out to the end here, and we'll write the radius as 6, and we're all set to go. Any questions? Okay, and I notice I'm going to have to change something in the notes. I've made every one of the... Oh, no, I did. Changed it up here. This is good. Excellent. That's what I was looking for. Okay, center on this one. Negative 5, comma, positive 1. Okay, what's weird about this one? It's not a perfect square, okay? So this is going to be a little bit more difficult to graph. If we were going to write down the radius, would we write the square root of 18, or would we write something else? Is that what we're going to write? Nope. This is uh, 3 times 3 times 2, so this is going to be 3 radical 2. Okay, these would be like the exact answers. If we're going to graph this, I don't know about you, but I'd probably need to think for a second. 3 radical 2. I'd want to know roughly what that is. So I could use a calculator. Shouldn't need it, though, because all we're going to do is we're just going to get close. Okay, um, if you know what radical 2 is, you can do a little multiplication problem. Or the easiest thing to do to figure out roughly what the radius is is look at this number right here, radical 18, and think for just a second. It's really close to a nice, perfect square. What's it close to? Close to 16. Okay, It's a little bigger than 16, so the radius is going to be a little bit bigger than 4. Okay, It's in between 16 and 25, two perfect squares. It's much closer to 16, so the answer is going to be much closer to, to 4. Okay, So... We're going to find negative 5, positive 1, and we're going to go a little bit more than 4 in each direction. And that ought to be good there. Okay? We've got the center and the radius labeled just outside there, so we're fine there. Any questions? Sure? Okay. Raise your hand if you've seen circles to this extent before. Okay. All right. So we were pretty good on the first part, but maybe not everybody's seen uh, circles as much. Okay, let's take a look at the last two problems. Um, on example eight, it says, if we're studying circles and we're given those two points, negative 6, 0, and 2, 2, what could we do with those? Notice I don't have a graph here, so let's think before we start plotting these points. Negative 6, 0, and 2, 2. So negative 6, 0, and 2, 2. Right there. Any ideas? Yeah. Okay. You could find the midpoint, and what would we do with the midpoint, Tammy? Okay, very good. So Tammy's suggestion is we could find the midpoint and then say the circle goes through these two points right here. If we find the midpoint, then this line from here to here has a special name. What's it called? It's called the diameter. Okay, that would be one thing that we could do. So I've got that in red. What else could we do? Yeah. Uh, like find the hypotenuse of this. Okay, that'd be fine. Is this the only way to make a circle using those two points? We could do this. What if we said this is the center and then that's the radius? We could make a circle that's like that. Or we could reverse it and say, what if this is the center and that's the radius? Then we'd have a circle like that. Okay? So is this enough information to tell what they want us to do? No, but can you see that you could actually do at least three different things with this? as far as circles go, okay? Well, luckily, they're a little more specific. It's what Tammy suggested, okay? Those two points are on the circle. They are solution points of the circle. If that's the case, then the center has to be smack dab in the middle, in which case you use what, Tammy? Midpoint formula. So remember, midpoint we could also think of as average point. 
If you ever forget the formula for the midpoint, just think it's the middle point. It's the average point. So we add the two coordinates together, negative 6 plus 2 and divide by 2. Add the two y coordinates together and divide by 2. This is the center. So this is going to be, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's going to be negative 2 comma 0. Oh, 1, 1. Yep, negative 2 comma 1. Thank you for correcting me. And then what else do I need? I need to know the radius. You have to have two things to find the equation of a circle. You've got to know where it is, what's the center, and you need to know how big it is, what's the radius. Okay. So on this one, there are a couple different things that we could do. I could find the distance from here to here. I could find the diameter and then cut it in half. Or I could just say, you know what, I know what this point is. This point is negative 2 comma 1. Let's just find the radius. Doesn't make any difference which one you do, okay? So I'm going to find the distance between 2, 2 and negative 2, 1. So that's going to be a square root. Difference between the x coordinates, how far is it from 2 to negative 2? 4. Square that. How far is it from 2 to 1? 1. Square that. So this is going to be 16 plus 1. So this means the radius is the square root of 17. Now, does that look like the ugliest radius we've had so far? It does. Is it hard to put that into the equation? Nope, because here's the cool thing. This is going to be x plus 2 quantity squared. Remember the opposite of this number right here. y minus 1 quantity squared. Opposite of that number right there. And what goes right here? r squared. If r squared is the square root of 17, if I square it, what do I get? I get 17. So not the nicest number, but plugging it into the equation is actually pretty darn easy. Okay? Any questions there? Okay, that's everything you need on circles to complete this assignment. Let's take a look at problem number 69. You've got a couple like that. It says a manufacturing plant purchases a new molding machine for uh, 225000 and is depreciated. Can somebody tell us what depreciated means? Loses value. Okay. So you want to buy appreciating assets rather than depreciating assets. Okay. What's a common depreciating asset that your parents probably have? A car. A car is a depreciating <laughs> asset. Okay. Until it gets to be 25 years old and it's really well taken care of or 50 years old or something like that, then it starts to appreciate again. Okay. What's an asset that your parents have that's uh, probably have that's an appreciating asset? What? A house. A house is normally an appreciating asset, except for the last five years or so. A lot of people lost a lot of money uh, on their home value and stuff like that. Okay. So um, here's what's going on with this one. It says y equals 225,000 minus 20,000 uh, 20, t, and it says from 0 to 8, and it says sketch the graph. So I think we mentioned this before. If we're going to sketch a graph, we ought to kind of think about roughly what this is going to look like. Okay, The value of this is going to start off at 25,000, and then what's going to happen if it's depreciating? 225,000. It's going to go down. Okay, So we want to start, it's going to be way up here, and then it's going to go down. Is it ever going to go, go below zero? Is the value ever going to be less than zero? Nope. So we could put our horizontal axis right here. This is our time axis, and we can write that in years. And this is our y axis, and it's represented in dollars, right? And if we start off at 225,000, Maybe we could make this 200,000, and that would be 100,000. And I'll write 200K and 100K. K kilo thousand. Where did the year start? Start at zero and go to eight. So I'm going to put an eight right here. And here's what I'm going to do so I can scale this nicely. Everybody watch, please. If you know where it starts and you know where it ends, a lot of times, especially with an even number, it's easy to do this. Grab the middle. That would be 4. 
Let's grab the middle of that one. That one's going to be 2. And grab the middle of that one. That one's going to be 6. That may be enough for you to do a decent graph. If you need to put little tick marks here, it's a lot easier to equally space things out if you do beginning, end, middle, and then do quarters, and then keep having things. Okay? If it were seven years, it would be a little bit more difficult, but we could figure that out. Okay? And then what happens every year based on this? Like, what if I plug in a 1? We know it starts off right here. What happens if I plug in a 1? I subtract how much? 20,000 for the first year. So that's going to put me right here, just above 200,000. I subtract 20,000 again. So this is going to go down in a, what name do we give something like this? Linear. And if I put in an 8, that's going to be subtracting 160,000. Where am I going to end up? 8. Hundred sixty thousand, and aren't I going to end up with about sixty-five thousand? Okay, so sixty-five thousand. Does that look pretty good? I mean, just with that rough sketch right there. Okay, now this is a line. Okay, let's pretend that that looks like a line. And um, do I put arrows on the end? Why not in this case? Okay. It's not going to keep going, and it can't be negative. Okay, so there will be a limit to where it ends up. Okay, and another reason right here. It tells us it works from zero all the way to eight. It doesn't say it works past there. Okay. Do you think it continues going down and just runs into zero about right there? Is that usually what happens? Anybody drive a crappy car to school that's like 20 years old? Sven drove a crappy car to school that's 20 years old. No, it's not 20? Is it a crappy car? Oh, Sven drove a nice car to school today. Go ahead. Okay, so Sven just said the word asymptote, okay, or kind of a bottom level or something like that. Um, linear models work pretty well in a very short time frame, but usually what happens is, It'll go down at a steady rate, and then what will happen is it will start to curve, okay? And maybe this piece of equipment 10 years from now, you know, it's worth 50000 and it kind of stays around there, okay? So has anybody bought a car recently, an old used car? Anybody in the market for one? You buy an old Toyota or a Honda or something like that that's 15 or 20 years old. Aren't they all around $2,000 or so? I mean, that's about how much you'd have to pay for a decent car. You want a you know, piece of crap that's only going to work for a couple months? Maybe you can pick one up for less than a thousand bucks. Okay, but if you spend less than that, you're not going to get much of anything. Okay. All right. So that linear model would break down at some point. Okay, are there any questions? 